Curtains open to reveal text reading Access Ability Summer Showcase, and a logo with a stick figure in the centre of a circle. There are two stylized controllers, one of which looks like an Xbox Adaptive Controller. Text reads, Sponsored by I Need Diverse Games. Hello everyone, and welcome to the first ever Access Ability Summer Showcase, sponsored by I Need Diverse Games. I'm your host, Laura. I'm a white woman with bright blue hair, shaved on one side, wearing a plain black dress standing in front of a blue, lightly animated backdrop. I am a disabled gamer, with a number of disabilities that impact things like my memory, sensory processing, coordination, focus, and hearing. And as such, I wanted to create a space during the week of E3 slash Summer Games Fest slash whatever we're calling the deluge of summer game announcement livestreams this year, where disabled gamers could be confident that if a game trailer seemed interesting to them, they would know upfront if the game was likely to be playable by them or not when it releases. Basically, I want this to be a space where disabled gamers can get in on the excitement of finding out about new and upcoming video games, with less risk of finding out later that a cool looking game that you've seen today isn't going to be something that you can play when it actually releases. Alongside trailers for recently released and upcoming video games, you'll also be hearing stories from disabled gamers about what accessibility means to them, and from disabled game developers about how they approached creating the kinds of accessible designs that they personally need when gaming. Not every video game shown here today is going to be playable by every disabled gamer. Disability is often a spectrum of overlapping distinct needs, and it's very difficult to make one game that is accessible to everyone. But my hope is that by the end of this roughly 40 minute long showcase, you'll see at least one game that looks cool and meets your specific accessibility needs. So without any further introduction, Let's jump into the first batch of game trailers. Each time the following sound effect plays, the Access Ability Summer Showcase logo is shown, on a red backdrop, alongside the logo for I Need Diverse Games, as a transition between trailers. The following trailer shows a woman, aged approximately in her early 20s, wearing a light blue top, shorts, and a backpack. The character is initially presented in 2D art alongside a cast of characters that includes two very similar looking people with bright blonde hair, dressed in matching white outfits, a punk with an eye patch and a bright pink mohawk, a man using a wheelchair with glasses and bright red facial hair, a gothic zombie, a surfer ghost, a middle-aged cherub, a purple-haired person wearing dungarees with a set of keys around their neck, and someone wearing a white dress with purple hair. This is suggested to be the game's main cast of characters. Mithrect Ambrosia Island is developed by Polygon Treehouse and published by Whitethorn Games. In Mithrect, you play as Alex, who has been shipwrecked on an island inhabited by the Greek gods. You'll need to befriend them and help get their memories back to uncover the mystery of Ambrosia Island. The game's main character, Alex, is viewed from a third-person perspective at a fairly high raised camera angle, running around a deserted island. The game's facial animations are fairly detailed, exaggerating facial expressions, but the art style uses cartoonish colours on 3D character models. Characters she meets include the Greek god Hermes, who is depicted as a bald-headed man wearing only plain white underpants, sandals, wristbands, and adorned with a small pair of wings. Making friends is integral to the gameplay of Mithrek. <laughs> You'll get to know the gods by talking to and learning about them. Naturally, many features in Mithrakt help make reading the dialogue accessible. The text is in a readable sans-serif typeface by default. Text bubbles are available in light or dark modes, so pick whichever you prefer. The gods make great conversationalists, and players can choose to press a button to confirm reading or allow the dialogue to autoplay at a fast, medium, or slow pace. The dialogue can be customized even further by having the text scroll or by having it show up all at once. Track objectives around the island using a wonderful gadget called the Ambrosia Dex that boasts a high contrast journal and inventory system. The Ambrosia Dex also has a radar function that uses sound effects, visuals, and haptics to let you know when you're close to finding a hidden treasure. Ambrosia Island is alive with discoveries, sights and sounds, and adorable little creatures. At this moment, protagonist Alex is speaking to a seagull. You'll explore the island using a stable, dynamic tracking camera, and can enhance your experience by toggling haptics or button press sprint. You can even customize your entire playthrough with full button remapping. And you won't need sound to enjoy the ambiance of Ambrosia Island. 
Mythrect includes captions for ambient and environment sound effects, so you can feel immersed in the vibrant surroundings with or without sound. Thank you for watching, and we can't wait to see you on the sun-kissed beaches in Mythrect Ambrosia Island. The Nintendo Switch logo appears. Welcome to Sky Tales, a wonderful world full of gentle puzzles to solve. In this very cartoonish and colourful trailer, a blue and purple snake-like dragon flies around colourful villages full of human characters, completing puzzles by doing activities such as connecting stars together to form constellations. Play as Sky, the friendly dragon, and help oh. out your friends and neighbours, or help the coasting crew set sail and discover long-lost treasure at the bottom of the sea. Sky, the dragon, is wearing a snorkeling mask as she delves under the ocean to locate hidden pirate treasure. Text reads, relax and unwind. Take a break between puzzles and make music with magical instruments. Sound the air with melodies and put on a magical concert of your very own. Sky makes music by flying through objects such as wind chimes, accompanying a band of human musicians playing individual instruments. And there's no need to rush. Play at your own pace. Explore the valleys of Aveshire, Raina Falls, Coaston, and Wisbridge in your own time. Text reads, play your own way. Accessibility is at the heart of Sky Tales. Gameplay shows a customizable high contrast mode, where player, object, and denizen colors can be customized, alongside the screen tint, color, and saturation of the background. Audio volumes can also be individually altered with sliders. With features that let you shape the game to meet your needs. Express yourself by collecting fabulous outfits from all corners of the world. Outfits shown include a train conductor hat, a wizard's hat, and even a chicken mask that seems to come with sound effects. Sky Tales, your playful world awaits. Hi, I'm Radders. I'm a disabled content creator and Twitch ambassador. I'm a white woman with brown hair, wearing a gray t-shirt with white outside seams. I live with multiple chronic illnesses, uh, Sjogren, CFS, Fibro, to name a few which leave me with both mobility and cognitive accessibility related needs. I really appreciate games that give me the ability to remove button mashing, or set longer windows on reaction time events, um, and really any kind of decent quest log or map just so I don't get too lost in the world. Uh, this next game not only has accessibility features that are beneficial for me, but it also just looks awesome. The vibrant pixel art, the chiptune soundtrack, and varied boss fights are a perfect accompaniment to a really cool lesbian love story. This is boss game, the final boss is my heart. On screen is a woman with dyed purple hair in a shaggy bob, wearing glasses, a black button up, a black tattoo choker, and silver sword earrings. Behind her is a bookshelf of video game and anime plush toys. Hey there, my name is Lily Valine, and I'm the lead developer of boss game, the final boss is my heart. Gameplay shows a series of boss fights, in the first example, a pixel art bird, in the middle of the screen. In the lower left and lower right are the pixel art faces of two women, with energy meters next to them. When they block attacks, a shield appears around their faces, draining that meter momentarily. Further bosses shown vary in design, including three small enemies stacked on top of each other's shoulders, and a witch in a graveyard. <laughs> Boss Game is a lesbian romance boss rush. You play as Sophie and Anna, two broke girlfriends who hunt devils to pay the rent. The game features lightning fast, rhythmic boss battles in a unique two hero battle system. Sophie and Anna fight simultaneously in order to build combos, keep each other alive, and unleash super attacks. If one of the two protagonists runs out of health, the other sends hearts over to revive them. When their combo meter is full, they do a combo attack, unleashing a blast of love against the boss enemy. In between boss fights, you'll flirt with your girlfriend, fight your corrupt employer, and uncover the dark secrets of Mammon City, all while texting friends and enemies. A text exchange informs Sophie and Anna that they have been chosen to hunt Mega Devils, 
which they respond to with a mixture of shock and excitement. Boss Game is all about using the power of love to defeat huge, ridiculous bosses. Because of the focus on hectic battles, I knew right away that I wanted to include a wide variety of gameplay options. Boss Game includes several different ways to adjust the experience and challenge, including granular settings for things like gameplay speed and bonus hero damage. These settings can be changed in large or small increments. Enabling the automatic block option will cause Sophie and Anna to activate their shields automatically upon taking damage, which reduces the need for quick reactions. The invincibility option makes it impossible to lose a battle, which allows players to avoid reaching a dead end. I've added a variety of different options so that people can experiment and find what works best for them. I found that players are very capable of using these settings to create an engaging level of gameplay that suits their ability and how they like to play. Boss Game, The Final Boss is My Heart, is out now on Android and iOS, and will be released this July on Steam and itch.io. Thank you so much for joining me. Please have a lovely day, and enjoy the rest of the showcase. The following trailer is set in a 3D, third-person, futuristic world, inhabited by alien characters with exaggerated appearances. Some aliens look almost like puppets, with overly large and slightly fabric-looking facial features, while others are exaggerations and humanoid adaptations of creatures we know from Earth, such as a large-eyed bipedal humanoid cat. Other characters shown include a large sentient purple pile of slime in a cowboy hat, named Preorder Earl, giving a sense that this world is full of characters designed to comedically parody things like the video game industry and other aspects of excessive capitalism. In a later shot, a wall-blocking progression literally features the words paywalled upon it. Hello, my name is Luis Alonso, and I'm the game developer for Spaceboat. I'm here today to talk to you about how I tackle the task of accessibility. What most people don't know about me is that I'm actually physically disabled myself, so I take accessibility very seriously. Despite being a triple amputee, I can't claim to be an expert in all forms of accessibility, but I can break down how I approach making Spaceboat as accessible as possible. As a result, I made sure that the game could be played comfortably with a controller and without the need for multiple button combinations for successful game progression. As someone who has beaten every Soulsborne game in existence but cannot play games like Metroid Dread, I can tell you this is paramount for people with physical disabilities. When people with cerebral palsy reached out to let us know they enjoyed playing the game, I knew that at least on that front, I'd been successful. One gameplay section shows the main character racing down a sewer tunnel, dodging luggage being thrown at them, in a chair with text that reads, Premium Pass. Now let's consider people with hearing disabilities. Since Spaceboat is a narrative-heavy game, it was important to make it possible to read every voice line that was spoken. As a result, I added subtitles when full dialogue text boxes were not shown. For the visually impaired, I ran the game with multiple simulated color blindness types and realized that the bright, colorful, and high contrast art direction worked rather effectively. In the case of the most common types of color blindness, like Deuteranopia, it actually turned into an advantage since key markers would pop out. Recently, we added more text for those with extreme, uncommon types of color blindness for game mechanics that relied too much on colors. If you're watching this and think we could improve Spaceboat's accessibility, please contact us at contact at recombobulator.ca. Thank you. Carrie is a white woman with silver dyed hair, wearing a black off-the-shoulder top, a silver game accessibility information icon necklace, and with two silver microdermal piercings below her collarbones. Hey, I'm Carrie. I'm the senior designer of accessibility at Rebellion, and I'm here to chat a bit about Sniper Elite 5. The following trailer shows gameplay of soldiers using sniper rifles to shoot targets, with slow motion scenes taking place as a bullet reaches its target, removing layers of skin to show a dramatic bullet impact effect. Sniper Elite 5 launched last year and it is the most accessible Sniper Elite and Rebellion game to date. One of our core pillars of the game is being able to play your own way, as we believe that anyone can be an Elite. I joined at the end of the project and there were already a great range of accessibility options and considerations that had gone into the game. Things like clear subtitles with speaker names, aim assists, and a highly customizable difficulty. Since release, we were able to implement lots of meaningful accessibility options in updates like aim toggle, automatic forward movement, auto traversal options, and colorblind palettes. Through our Discord channel, we've been able to get a lot of feedback that's really helped us to address the barriers that our players were facing, and we have a range of ways to get in touch if you have any feedback for future titles. That's what we absolutely love, because there should be nothing about us without us. 
You can read all about the full suite of options available on our new accessibility page found at rebellion.com forward slash accessibility forward slash sniper dash elite dash five. There's also a link to give your own feedback or join our Discord. We're proud to support the Access Ability Summer Showcase, and as part of that, we've donated some Sniper Elite 5 keys for a giveaway. So email laurakbuzzofficial at gmail.com before midnight BST on Friday the 16th of June to enter a random draw for a game key. Give your email the subject line Sniper Elite Giveaway, and please name your platform of choice. Good luck, Cypress. Tabby has light pink hair shaved on one side, light skin, and she is standing in her garden. Hi. I'm Tabby, and I'm the UX director at Mighty L Studios. Our newest title, A Night in the Attic, gave our team a really unique opportunity to work with accessibility features in VR, and I'd like to share some of them with you today. An attic with a diagonally angled roof contains a circular window depicting a colourful medieval mural. Game levels appear to take place within empty wooden drawers, each containing a small diorama environment for the simplistic characters of the game to navigate. Using the game accessibility guidelines and testing with Able Gamer's player panels, we developed a night in the attic with some great features in mind. Some features we've added to reduce cognitive load on our players are tutorials with button glyphs and controller movements, a book of tool actions which unlock as you progress and which you can access anytime, player controlled dialogue progression that lets you know where in space the dialogue is taking place, and levels that are about 5 to 15 minutes long to enable frequent breaks. To help with visual accessibility, we've used captions for illustrated manuscripts and text-only dialogue, a high contrast and easy-to-read font, UI elements that you can grab and move around to enhance readability, and no information is conveyed through color alone. The audio in A Night in the Attic features independently controlled levels for music and sound effects, plus you can toggle monaural or binaural sound and haptic feedback for actions. Finally, physical accessibility has been a really interesting challenge in VR. A Night in the Attic features comfort considerations like fully seated gameplay, keeping actions within an arm's length, and minimal requirement to bend or twist. There are three ways to control Guinevere. One-handed tilt, two-handed tilt, or with either analog stick. By incorporating best practices and playtesting feedback where possible, we've worked hard to make sure A Night in the Attic is a comfortable and enjoyable experience for our players. Alex is a white man with short brown hair. He is wearing rectangular black framed glasses and a blue polo shirt. Hi, I'm the developer of Upheaval, a text-based open world fantasy adventure game. In just 30 in-game days, the enigmatic magician will arrive. You have until then to track down magical treasures and aid or interfere with people and factions that surround your small village. Upheaval is turn-based so you can always take as much time as you want to plan your next move. The graphical version of Upheaval is being shown, which mixes on-screen text with 2D illustrations, largely of top-down perspectives on small inhabited settlements. And if the in-game time limit of 30 days is too short, turn on relaxed mode and take as many in-game days as you want to explore everything the game has to offer. You can play Upheaval completely using just your keyboard or using just your mouse or touchscreen. For blind players, the console version of Upheaval supports screen readers like NVDA and includes full text descriptions of the graphical version's important visual elements. Footage of the console version, designed for blind players, is shown on screen, and includes the following text. You take out your map. In the centre of the map is a village, surrounded by wilderness. West of the village are mountains, with a path leading up to them. East of the village is a forest, with a dotted path leading along its north edge. South of the village is a road that ends at a broken bridge, and divides an open area into two halves, a western half and an eastern half. North of the village is a road that runs off the edge of the map, surrounded by nothing. You are by the Old South Road, where it passes the burial mounds. What would you like to do? 1. Zoom in on the mountains to the west. 2. Zoom in on the forest to the east. 3. Zoom in west of the road to the southwest. 4. Zoom in east of the road to the southeast. Press enter to put the map away. You can play upheaval in windowed or full screen mode, in dark mode or in light mode, and with or without background graphics. You can adjust volume for music, ambiance, and sound effects separately to get the sound experience you want. 
You can play Upheaval's free demo and early access alpha right now on itch.io, or wishlist Upheaval on Steam to get an email when the full version is released. If you have any questions about accessibility or any issues accessing Upheaval, join the Discord to chat with me at upheavalgame.com slash discord. Hi there everyone, my name is Revia and I'm a disabled and chronically ill content creator from Norway. I'm a 30 year old woman sitting in my really cozy gaming room. I have red hair, I have black heavy eyeliner and I have a lavender knitted sweater. I have been ill my whole life and due to this accessibility is something that is really dear to my heart. I'm born with something called cerebral palsy and later in life I've gotten a bunch more of diagnostic, some of them like PTSD and rheumatoid arthritis. All of these problems affect my everyday life, mostly in the form of like brain fog, forgetfulness, spasms, tremors, a lot of pain and a bunch of fatigue. I am lucky enough though to have medication that keeps my immune system at bay, but if I have a bad day, I am dependent on accessibility to be able to play my favorite games. That can be things like puzzle guides, difficulty modes, the ability to pause the game whenever, or the ability to switch between a controller or a keyboard, or just good tutorials in-game. And this is why I am honored to introduce this next game that not only thought about my need for be able to switch between different controllers, but also make sure that a player never loses a level and is always able to progress in a story. This is Princess Farmer by White Thorn Games and Samo B Games. Princess Farmer is a pixel art aesthetic game with a cast of characters largely made up of feminine and colourful anthropomorphic bunny rabbit characters. A trans flag in the background of an early shot helps demonstrate the game's active efforts to include diverse representation. Princess Farmer is a match three visual novel with lots of queer and diverse representation created with accessibility in mind. Charlene, the game designer, artist, and story creator of the game, injured her hands a few years ago. One of the things that helped keep her spirits up while she healed was playing Switch games with one hand. She decided that she wanted to make a game that was easy to pick up and play with just one hand. One of Princess Pharma's main accessibility features is its gameplay styles. Sometimes folks just want to chill and not have to think about what they're doing. Action Bunny Mode allows players to do just that. And if a player wants a challenge, planning out their moves carefully to make or avoid specific matches, there's Puzzle Bunny. And for those players who just can't make up their mind, Balance Bunny combines the two. The game will never punish you. The worst that can happen is that Gaia will be slightly less thrilled when you finish a level, and reward you with fewer heart coins. But you'll still advance and have many more chances to make Mother Gaia bounce with glee. There are about a zillion ways to control Princess Farmer. Multiple buttons work on game pads, the arrow or WASD keys on the keyboard, and on mobile you can either tap or swipe the screen. There are so many settings to make your time in Guy's Valley as suited to your needs as possible, including haptic control, separate audio channels, high contrast for visibility, visual cues that don't rely on just color, font control, no screen shake, and optional match flashing. Most of all, we really just want players to enjoy the warm hug that is Princess Farmer. The story is lighthearted and filled with mystery, cheeky flirting, and supportive friends who know you're doing your best. You'll always find a cheerful welcome in Gaia's Valley. Botany Manor is a first-person puzzle game developed by Balloon Studios and published by Whitethorn Games. You play as Arabella Green, a retired botanist living in a beautiful, picturesque manor. While exploring the manor, you'll discover clues and research that will help you unlock the mysteries of forgotten flora. Admire the manor through Arabella's eyes. With field of view, motion sensitivity, and camera smoothing sliders, invertible camera controls help ensure you have a familiar experience. Inspect postcards, books, posters, and more around the manor for information about your plants. When deciphering these clues, text overlays can assist with the details that may be hard to see in your playing environment. The overlay is a high-contrast, sans-serif text overlay that displays on-screen. 
You don't need to rush your time in Botany Manor. There are no time limits to solve puzzles, so feel free to explore the halls and gardens during your stay. If you do, however, feel the rush of being on the brink of a discovery, you can toggle Sprint with a single button press. Botany Manor has an optional single stick mode that allows you to play using a single analog stick for movement. You'll have a toggle or hold option for a look around view that you can use to stand still while you use the analog stick to observe your surroundings instead of move. Here, we're using single stick mode and have the camera customization set to increase your field of view and camera smoothness. Take your time researching, relaxing, and uncovering the mysteries of long lost flora in Botany Manor. Hi everyone, Laura here again. Thank you so much for being here and watching the very first Access Ability Summer Showcase. I would like to take a quick moment at this point in the showcase to thank I Need Diverse Games, whose sponsorship of the showcase's debut year has made it possible to commission art assets for the event, as well as creating American Sign Language, British Sign Language, and audio described versions of the presentation. We've got a bunch of games still to showcase today, but I want to take some time to say a quick thank you as well to all of the developers who brought games along to the showcase today. This is the event's first year, and I appreciate every game developer who took the time to take a chance and be involved in a debut event like this. The hope is that we can make the Access Ability Summer Showcase an annual event going forward, growing the scope and scale of the event over time. Thank you so much for being here from the start, supporting what we're trying to build. Anyway. You're here for game trailers and news, so let's get back into things, starting with one of 2023's most impressive examples of accessibility improvements that were added in a post-launch update. Brock the Investigator is a 2D perspective game viewed from a side-on perspective. The art style is bright and cartoonish, and the narrative is set in a world where the characters are anthropomorphic animals. The main character, Brock, is a middle-aged alligator man, wearing a black shirt and brown jacket, as well as a purple hat. He is questioned for murder by a police officer who is an elderly otter with a large bushy moustache and eyebrows. This day started like any other. Judged for your sins. No! no! A true nightmare. Have you ever murdered someone? What? Answer the question! Fabrice, the game's developer, is a white man with short dark hair wearing a pair of glasses and large over-ear headphones. Hello, I'm Fabrice from Cocat, a French solo game developer. For six years, I've been making Brock the Investigator, which combines a narrative adventure game with beat-em-up action. Brock offers a wide range of accessibility features, in particular for blind gamers. A series of accessibility options for blind players scroll past on the screen, including support for positional audio for combat, wall vibrations, full narration of cutscenes and gameplay scenarios, skippable fights and puzzles, puzzles that are adapted to be more easily playable by blind players, larger fonts, and high contrast visuals. The full game is voiced, including hotspots, menus, specific tutorials and audio de descriptions were added. Before this project, I had no idea there was no big adventure game like this playable for visually impaired gamers, so I'm pleased more players are now able to enjoy it. It was really fun to implement too. Brock is available now on PC and consoles, and you can try the demo on all platforms. Thomas appears on screen, with shoulder-length dark hair, wearing a grey shirt. Hi, my name is Thomas Tvorek also known as Lirin. I was working on Brock the Investigator as an accessibility consultant. This is my first project on such a large scale and I can tell you this was a really, really beautiful adventure. Mostly I was working on text-to-speech and how to improve combat and puzzles for the blind people, while Cowcat did the magic based on my feedback and my work. And I hope you've enjoyed Brock the Investigator, and if not, go and grab it. This is a really, really fantastic game, with excellent voice acting, story, and music. And I hope you like the accessibility features we've implemented. 
Brock the Investigator is out now on Steam, PS4, PS5, Xbox and Switch. Hello, I'm Onion Blaze and I'm currently working on a game called Himig. Himig is a game with a low detail, colourful 3D art style. It is in third person and is set in a small town. While there are roads visible, they are largely empty, suggesting this is a small suburban area. It's a short everyday life adventure of two school kids in a peaceful town, making friends with a bunch of lively people and creating unforgettable memories. The game's story is split into small bite-sized episodes where you can explore, learn more about the characters, and find collectibles for minigames. Or you can just sit around and relax with cats and dogs. Based on how you spend your days, the main character's personalities will slowly develop, changing how they interact with the world. A young boy, sat on the floor, is looking up to the player character and says, I'll just stay here for now. Moving your character in the game can be done either manually, via keyboard or controller, or by clicking on interactable icons with a mouse. So far, the game allows clipboard-based text-to-speech for most of its systems, with proper support for it planned before release. There's also audio subtitles, audio descriptions, and separate audio volumes for background music, ambient sounds, and sound effects. Speed or difficulty options for dialogues, in-game time, or minigames are also present, alongside various screen and graphic settings like window type, brightness, shadow and particle quality, camera motion, and many more. There's still a lot of things to work on before the game is finished, but some planned features are general UI size and color settings, a simple map, event guides and recaps, full controller mapping, and more limited control options, like being able to play with just one button or by making any sound with a microphone. Himig is currently planned for Windows, Mac, and Linux, both on Itch and Steam. I'm designing the game to be as accessible as I can with my current resources, so if you're interested and would like to see more of it, please share it to your friends, wishlist it on Steam, or become a member on Coffee, where I share frequent updates about Himig and other things. Thank you, stay safe, and have a good day. Vivek Gohill is a brown-skinned man with glasses, wearing a blue-coloured jumper, sitting in his wheelchair behind a desk. He is wearing full-ear headphones with a microphone. Hi, I'm Vivek Gohill. An accessibility consultant. And journalist. Gaming is an integral part of my DNA. It's a vital coping mechanism for living with the challenges of neutral muscular dystrophy. Gaming gives me the freedom to meet aliens, become a superhero, or explore environments that I would never be able to experience. Ultimately, gaming brings me joy. Accessibility options unlock my potential, showcasing my abilities instead of highlighting my limitations by removing any unnecessary barriers. Recently, Star Wars Jedi Survivor had good accessibility design. It included full button remapping, a core accessibility feature I require so that controls are positioned comfortably to deal with my limited reach and dexterity. The option to slow down game speed allows me enough time to complete intense traversal gameplay. 
I have this case to complete the task, but I have slower reaction times. Accessibility manages this difference and reduces frustration. On a higher level, accessibility is an integral aspect of game design, without which game developers are alienated a key user base. Game developers should collaborate with accessibility consultants as lived experiences are vital can provide and progress innovation. As the accessibility saying goes, don't do anything about us without us. Solace State initially seems to be a 2D game, but early camera shifts demonstrate its illustrated world is made up of 3D models, which the camera can shift perspective between. Characters are drawn in a style reminiscent of rushed street art, with text displayed to the player in creative ways, such as via text message conversation logs shown on the side of the screen. Can you retain your humanity while fighting against a corporate biotech conspiracy? This is Solid State, a 3D choice-driven cyberpunk and hope-punk visual novel. Play as the young hacker Chloe, who confronts political plots as she fights for her friends and her city. Your choices in building up relationships and communities can revolutionize into more or less freedoms and human rights. In a game of 31 fully illustrated characters, you can romance Torrent, a local who shares Chloe's rare intuitive hacking abilities, Swaley, a community leader who grapples with expectations on different levels of governance, and Alden, an old flame who was Chloe's first love in university. Chloe's hacking allows her to take on another person's identity and read their encrypted data. With such abilities, what does it mean to speak your truth responsibly? Chloe hacks into the private data of a security guard, and is presented the choice to, based on what she's learned, either try to flatter the guard into being helpful, or question his loyalty hoping that the aggressive move will achieve better results by catching him off guard. In a world where humanity's rights are up on the chopping board of corporate greed, will Chloe's actions incite violent backlash or bloom into hope? All accessibility features can be toggled at any time. We have a toggle for open dyslexic font for all of our text to make our game more readable. There is a full history log of previously read text for each scene. Text speed can be adjusted. There is a selection of highlight colors to show which character is speaking, which aids with visual legibility and color blindness. There is no time limits in making choices in game, and there are no flashing lights. Coming to Steam and Xbox in 2023, your choices mobilized. The end of the trailer shows that Solus State has been showcased at multiple events, including Ludo Naricon and Different Games Toronto as well as being nominated for awards such as Indie Arena Booth Best Story Game 2020. Steve is a heavy set man in his late 30s or early 40s. He has a round face and is wearing a black baseball cap with an orange flare. He has a dark beard with grey taking over the middle and sides. Hi everybody, Steve Spawn here. My friend Laura Cade asked me to stop by and tell a brief story about why accessibility matters to me. Well, there's obviously a lot of stories and they take a lot of time, so I'm going to try to tell you the shortest story that I know that made a difference in my life. A long time ago, young Steve really, really enjoyed hanging out with his friends. He was uh, a very not social kid. Uh, young Steve had no idea how to talk to people or how to make friends or was scared of being made fun of in so many ways. But uh, the one thing I was not scared of was playing video games. Well, 
I enjoyed playing games, but I always did them alone. And my friends were kind of going in the opposite direction. In high school, they stopped wanting to go play games and wanted to go to the world. And they wanted to go out and enjoy hotel parties away from the adults. They wanted to go to the clubs for under 18s, and they wanted to have fun in the real world. But the problem was, outside of the club was my mortal enemy, the single stair really annoying thing I could not get over because apparently ramps weren't built back in 1992. Anyway, thing is, uh, I had a friend who knew that I was struggling with this and because of that, uh, invited me over to his place and despite the fact that he also had the same invites to go to these parties and whatnot, would bring me over to his house, and which was also inaccessible with another stair, staircases, you know, and uh, would bring out his Nintendo to his garage. And we would sit out in his garage and we would play video games together. And that was our connection point was that he took the time and understanding to realize that I was being left out of our friendship circle that I had always been included in, not purposely, but because people didn't realize that wheelchairs couldn't go where they wanted me to be able to go. And he found a way around that by introducing me to video games, by keeping me in video games as a social aspect. And so, in his garage, we would sit and play Mortal Kombat fighting games, and we would laugh at each other, getting pwned, and whatever else you got back in the 1990s. And uh, we stayed connected through all those years, uh, because video games allowed us to stay despite a hard time. And I think everyone should have opportunities where Maybe life is boxing you out a little bit, and your disabilities are getting in the way of things that you'd otherwise really enjoy. Well, in the world of video games, it shouldn't be like that. We can put accessibility in games, and having the ability to play games, no matter where you are, is a super important part of remaining accessible. Hearts is a light-hearted and wholesome 3D narrative-driven adventure about coming to terms with grief and recapturing the freedom of exploring nature. You play as Tyke, who is revisiting a beloved childhood holiday destination, Pine Hearts, to overcome the physical and mental mountain set before him. Tyke, the main character of Pine Hearts, is shaped like a rounded cylinder, with minimal details added to their cartoonish appearance beyond dots for eyes. He is wearing a blue top and a red hat. The world Tyke is navigating is decorated with props that look like they've been built out of cardboard and coloured in using crayons. Our accessibility goals. The team at Hyperluminal are committed to making games better, and for us that includes striving to make our games as inclusive and accessible as we can. We took part in an inclusive design accelerator in 2022 that kickstarted the process of us building accessible design practices into the culture of our studio. Community co-design. Sierra is a white woman with blue eyes and shoulder length red brown hair, wearing a khaki green jumper and sitting in her home office. A key concern for our focus group arose around the need to have clear signposting of what accessibility options were available and where to find them. We have chosen to address this in two ways. Accessibility onboarding. Firstly, by creating a dedicated accessibility onboarding flow for first time players, where they can set a few basic accessibility options before they jump into gameplay. Accessibility menu. We also aimed to provide immediate and quick access to the full suite of options from our settings menu by housing them under a dedicated accessibility heading. Currently, we have around 10 settings planned for release, with two in the development phase right now. These include Color blocking, which applies block colours to key characters and interactable elements, making them easier to identify against a desaturated background palette. Simplified controls, which removes inputs that require prolonged or timed button presses, with simpler single button press inputs allowing easier access for players with joint pain or upper body dexterity limitations. Our future plans include options for high contrast and highlight interactable modes, settings for scaling UI and fonts and for changing font styles, as well as options for turning on contextual subtitles for animated cutscenes and full controller remapping support. 
Beyond Pine Hearts, we're also focused on developing an approach to sustainably delivering accessibility across all of our future games. As a small indie development studio, finding time and resources to invest in developing solutions to some of the accessibility challenges we face can be difficult. So we wanted to find a way to carry effort from project to project through our own internal settings and accessibility toolkit. The settings and accessibility toolkit is a plugin for the Unity engine, which our development team has built as a customizable framework for settings that can be easily ported across projects. This also gives us access to developer facing settings, which can help us to identify and reduce accessibility barriers as we go through development. An example of this is our color blindness filters, which allow artists and QA to turn on specific filters while testing the game, making it easier to identify issues with contrast and the readability of characters and interactables against background elements. Release plans. Heinhardt's will launch in early 2024 on Steam and Switch, but you can follow our progress in the meantime via our Twitter and Steam pages. At Pinehearts Game on Twitter and at forward slash pine underscore hearts on Steam. The following trailer features gameplay set in a clean, futuristic, mostly white space station, inhabited by friendly looking robots who are in many cases essentially a floating computer monitor with expressive digital eyes and a pair of robotic arms sprouting out of the side of the monitor. Welcome to Norpopolis. Where aliens fly. I'm detecting room energy signatures. Robots fish. And you do the vacuuming. An autism friendly VR adventure. In a distant galaxy. Gameplay shows players using a magical vacuum to do activities such as fishing, sucking up creatures, or cleaning a huge mouth from the inside. Alison Lang is a 58-year-old Scottish woman wearing a plain white top. Autistic people love playing games, but games aren't designed for autistic people. They can be too loud, they can be too bright, they can be too stressful. Welcome to Space Station Norpopolis, where the groups have got loose after a lab accident. You have to use your Vacuumizer 5000 to help friendly robot Blink recapture them before Mr. Nort finds out. The game is full of features to help autistic people enjoy the game. There's no fail state, no stressful time limits. You can skip challenges, repeat tasks and go at your own speed. If you get overstimulated, hit the smartwatch and come straight out of the game to a calm space where you can recover. Then rejoin the game when you're ready. There's an accessibility menu to fine-tune the game to your particular sensitivities, and a multitude of other features designed into every level. Blink in the Vacuum Space has been designed from the ground up for autistic people, to put them in control so they can enjoy the game and just be themselves. Autistic people are proud of their autism. It isn't something that needs to be fixed. It's something that needs to be supported. That's why we've created Blink in the Vacuum of Space. Wow! Groobs! So ominous! Blink and the Vacuum of Space! Available now on MetaQuest. So, let's get to it, shall we? We're nearing the end of the Accessibility Summer Showcase 2023, with the next trailer being our last one of the day, announcing a release date for a game that a lot of people in the gaming accessibility space have been looking forward to for the past few months. All that remains to be said is thank you to every game developer out there that's taking the fight for improved accessibility seriously, every disabled gamer that's speaking out about their experiences, and to everyone who tuned in today to watch the showcase. You can find out more about the games that were shown during today's showcase by checking out access-ability.uk, where we will have links to all of the day's trailers as well as to every game that was showcased. I hope you all enjoy our final announcement and hopefully we'll see you all again next year. Sightless Combat is wearing a blue t-shirt with a Superman logo, and a baseball cap with the RNIB logo, the Royal National Institute of Blind People. He's wearing large over-ear headphones, and has a room decorated with gaming items, including a golden replica weapon from Gears of War. Hi everyone, I am Sightless Combat, accessibility consultant, gamer without sight, and content creator. 
Now, if you're wondering why I use the term gamer without sight, I use it because legal blindness, often just shortened to being blind, can and often does include usable and or residual vision, which I've never had. It's basically a way of me saying, I can see absolutely nothing at all. And that brings us to a very interesting point. I'm really, really glad to be here. Thank you so much to the organizers for letting me participate in this event. It's an absolute privilege and an honor. Uh, but I'm here to introduce to you the next game in the lineup, a fantastic game that is from a genre that a lot of people would think you can't play without being able to see, namely a point and click game. And it is the wonderful Stories of Blossom, which has been uh, rumored and hinted at and demoed for a number of years in various fashions. And finally, the amazing folks at Softly Studios are releasing it this year. And I am so excited for this because, partly because I'm in the credits, but also because it's going to be a game that is fully playable without the need for sighted assistance in any capacity, which is always a fantastic thing to see when it's executed as well as this game does it. So without further ado, here is the new trailer Four Stories of Blossom from Softleaf Studios. Stories of Blossom is a watercolour art style 2D point and click adventure game in which a young girl interacts with cute creatures often shaped like food or plant life. In a cropped circle is Connor. He has short dark hair and a beard. He is wearing glasses and a black t-shirt. Hi everyone, my name is Connor Bradley. Creative Director of Softly Studios. Today I am excited to be sharing a quick overview of the accessibility of our game, Stories of Blossom. From the very beginning, accessibility has been our main goal. So we've been working closely with those from the disabled and neurodiverse communities to help us remove barriers from our game. A lot of this work has been baked into the experience itself, such as the readability of each dialogue line, the design of our puzzles, and how we lay out information and our menus. We also have a large array of accessibility options that you can use to tweak the experience to your liking. For a full rundown of those, please visit our updated accessibilities page at softleafstudios.com. And now I am thrilled to announce we have a new trailer. I believe I have a story that could help. An elderly man with grey hair and fuzzy moustache is shown telling a story to his young granddaughter, who has brown hair tied back in a ponytail. Clara, the young girl, can be seen in different outfits, solving problems such as wearing a pirate outfit to rescue a telescope in a ship's crow's nest from an angry crow. Clara's adventures seem to take her into space, to a distant world inhabited by fungi people, as well as to the homes of cookie villagers, and to a distant island where pirate treasure may be hidden. There once was a pirate sailed the seven seas and wore a pink tutu and wore a pink tutu as clara solves more and more problems villagers are shown to become more happy such as when a plant person sprouts a batch of new leaves resembling a hairdo Stories of Blossom, out August 16th on PC and Xbox. A wall-mounted fish interrupts. How many tickles will it take to make an octopus laugh? Ten tickles. <laughs>